necessarily need her to be involved. Mm. Um, Namiga, though, it, it's scary. You're playing into a Chen, you're playing into a DK. Both these heroes are really good at pushing towers. Like TB, if he gets involved as well, I think they're. They're, if they five man, it might be pretty hard for Piney to deal with. Cause like, how is Mars meant to jump push? in about dying, right? There, so there is what, push, yeah. like what the, What's the wave clear for Piney? Like, yes. what, once they group as five as Namiga, they've got like Splinter Blast, Crypt Swarm. No. I don't, it doesn't feel like like the first 15 minutes or so anyway, it doesn't feel like PA or Ember Spirit can offer you that much in that regard. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That, the Wyvern's pretty nice, but if he's under level, then maybe some really early moves. Like we saw yesterday, like outsiders taking advantage of early cards and stuff. I don't know if Numiga wow. want to play like that with, with their Chen. But they could maybe pressure this mid tower pretty hard before Wyvern's getting and DP are getting to levels to be able to just stand in front of it. Well, this Dire Vision sees everything. <laughs> Parry Parney, they think they're being sneaky. They've been scouted. <laughs> I think their ward has been spotted. Actually, I think both of the Observer Wards for Radiant have been spotted. Dyer are pinging the, uh, the one in the mid lane as well. Jeez. Yeah, I imagine if they've done... I, I wonder how much research goes into these qualifiers. Like, uh, you know, you come into Arlington Major or whatever, and you've researched every team, their warding patterns, you've got, like, mad the stacks of paper. <laughs> I wonder if they just see the wards or if they, like, read, like, hey, yeah, these guys usually ward here. Yeah, I probably have a pretty good idea. And they're, they're playing against each other as well in uh, you know, third party tournaments, stuff like that. So, probably got a pretty good idea just learning through experience. Yep, this elephant is so loud, Gary. I want to cry. <laughs> they won't stop pressing the funny elephant sound. But it's not Techie's doing it, is it? It's the, D the DP's <laughs> doing it. He's, uh, this is mating call. He's trying to bring in Hellscream. Hellscream honking instead. I was, I was kind of hoping when I saw that honk, I was like, please be the goose. <laughs> the goose game honk, honk but no. Honk, yeah. Half, half, half. Not happening, though. Now we see all three lanes across the board. Back up against an Ember Spirit mid. Down the bottom, Techies DK against a PA Wyvern. And up at top, TB Chen versus Marcy DP. I think that's, that's got to be my favorite lane here, this Marcy DP in this game. Mm-hmm. Most potential for kills, probably. Ah, uh, maybe maybe Namiga can kill Immersion actually if they get. It's gonna be hard because you, you know walking up to a wyvern and pressing stun is is not too viable. But if they manage, if he's ever out of position, uh, like Techies is gonna do so much damage with blast off. Like level three, maybe they're like pretty pretty strong. I think both people in this bot lane should maybe strive to get some raindrops going. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear a word you're saying. I'm, Dax, I'm, these I'm... alphas are way too loud, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's 9 a.m. where I am. My neighbors are going to be waking up and wondering what the hell's going on. It's Sunday Sunday morning, and we've got some some English idiot upstairs making elephant noises. I mean, it's eight, it's eight for me in actual England. In actual? What do you mean actually? <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> Yeah, let the island sink. I'm I'm on mainland continental Europe. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. So last I've... game I was deprived of this Ember v, v Batrider mid matchup. So uh, now I actually get to watch how it plays out. Yeah, is, it, is Bat favored right? Like Flame Guard is is decent, but what does Ember do to to match up against Marine here? I don't know. I mean, I'd hope it's it's bat favored. You're just dropping a lot of stickies. I think he dodged the sticky actually with his slight, and so the stacks just reset, which is nice. But you just need to do a lot of pre bagro. Oh, Pasha. Yeah, TB with a meta. One more hit. He's, he's got it. Yeah, walks straight into the trees. Nice. It was quite a while ago, right? This TB build changed from going meta level one to the reflection instead, mm -hmm. and you just trade with your support. Um, and you know, like use the reflection to help them trade, and then just take these early, wear them down. And I, I like it a lot. And it's clearly set up and done well here for this level two timing where they get the the metamorphosis. You, like this Chen doesn't even have creeps yet, and they're still able to run down Pasha. It seems like a pretty bad mistake, but I think they just hit too first and weren't expecting it. Oh, there's a lot of damage in these other lanes as well. Like Malreen mid fighting the depressed kid. Ember actually battles back decently enough. And bottom lane we. I did have the PA having to fall back to tower to salve because they threw a stun and a blast off in towards her. 
an immersion, not really able to, to save the PA. That is a lot of damage. Like, this PA is probably going to suffer from this a lot. Like, just getting blast off done. That's why I want to see this raindrop at least, because otherwise, like, there's nothing she can do. She's melee hero. She has to walk to the wave, and DK's going to be standing in the middle of it. Mm, we've already got Bracer and Stick up on the DK as well. As Immersion plays forward onto Hellscream's tankies. I guess there's a little sentry to block up the large camp. Is that Dire Sentry out of range? Yeah, it doesn't spot it. So well done by Immersion while mid lane to press kid. Sliding, chaining, but still dying. A Batrider coming out on top again. Even though Ember Spirit's last hits look pretty good, that, that kill now is going to give Batrider a, a lot of impetus to continue dominating this lane. We have seen the snowball before. Literally yesterday, you get the six first, suddenly you're diving the tower, you're using the lasso, there's nothing these heroes can do. Just one kill just catapults your XP way up. And he's got boots now as well. So it would be nice to see some move around these four minute runes to maybe try and safeguard the Ember Spirit. But I, I do wonder who that's going to be. You know, Wyvern not the best, pretty slow hero. Marcy doesn't really want to leave top lane either. As they do actually go in onto Kiritich with a nice jump and dispose. Chen has got a little tornado creep, fighting back into heaven. Marcy pretty low, but not in danger of dying just yet. And a couple of tangos passed over the TB as well. Have you played lane versus this this uh, hurricane creep no, thing? I've it not. is so much damage. I've like, played jungle against it. Oh yeah, I mean the jungle isn't you you don't <laughs> think about it, right? You're just like, oh a little hurricane, no problem. And suddenly you're like ten percent health and you're like, wait, what yeah. happened, man? Like, oh, I've got to put my fairy fire to deal with the jungle creep. <laughs> right? It, it's it's crazy damage. It lasts for a really long time, and I don't think it's even channeled, so like stunning the, the wild wing doesn't do anything. Hmm. Um, they, they have meta again right now on TB, so maybe if they can reset the creepy equilibrium to like get it closer to their tower, maybe they can run Pasha down the lane. But right now he's really happy. Like this. Well, he's got he's got two tornadoes now. Oh my god! It's oh, so sad. Pasha it's so run! Painful. Pasha run! Don't let the tornadoes hit you! Like look at his health. He's not even standing in it. Like the AOE is huge. <laughs> There's so much safety for the Terrorblade now. Yeah, deny range creeps, get a bit of damage on tower. Reflection actually playing aggressively forward towards heaven. And Pasha, the penitence on him. High ground observer would even placed by Soban to try and get in there towards the ancient camp. So they'll do a nice little TP back to tier one. So Pasha can gather the wave and stop this damage on his tower. On to Press Kid getting dived in the mid lane. Malreen does step back as Marcy arrives there, making it a little more awkward for the bat to keep going. It would be really nice if someone on Namigo could refill Bat's bottle. Oh, wait, he's just going for the bounty room. Yeah, that's good. I was going to say, I, he just needs some mana. Because he's hit six before the press kid, and the press kid's pretty far off. Dude, these double hurricane stops are so funny. Look at him go. <laughs> go wild. <laughs> like, the, Pasha's just completely zoned off the, of the wave. I, I like that dive as well, because it forced Pasha to have to TP, and now his life is like at risk. He's scared. Obviously, it is like a great scenario for him that the wave is so close to his tower because Dyer's if it was close to TB's, it, his lane might actually have just Dyer been over completely. Scanning. Yeah. And Marcy and TP admit as well, but it looks like Hellscream going to guard the haste rune denied by Ooh. Immersion. But that's going to mean the Wyvern's dead here, surely. Malarine will get in there with a the level 3 sticky and the sticky bomb. Lots of sticky. They jump in with the blast off to press kid. Nine stick charges on his Ember Spirit. Can't save his Wyvern though, but maybe the Marcy can turn back onto the bat and get a huge kill. Depressed Kid picking up the bounty for it. Remnanting forward. Aggressive play from this Ember Spirit looking for the double. Sticky Bomb's on him, but he's got the slight to kill it. Nice. Nice rotation from the supports. Like, Pasha has to give up a little bit. Like This double stack small camp is going to mean he, he misses out on an entire wave. But for the cost of killing a bat rider and giving two kills to your mid laner is... It's just great. It's totally re helping recovering his his game. He's now like highest net worth in the game. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. This this whole advantage has been lost now for that. Yeah, oh, hasty tonight. Very useful as well. Because previously it had been uh, pretty much every water rune for Malreen. Just gathering up all those bottle refills. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So press kid returns back to that lane. Uh, how, how's things for the the PA? Oh, oh, oh the TB. TB up top. They've got a penitence and a bit of a turnaround with a sunder. Oh, Kiritic, can he kill off Pasha in time? The Spirit Siphon not going to heal her up enough. Punishment. Great turnaround there. Hitting level 6 and getting that Sunder right on time. 
I was gonna say, did he hit that as he was being gone on? Because like, usually TB's not skill thunder. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah. An attempt bottom as well. Nah, just a, a sticky bottom thrown in. Safeguard the push here with a catapult wave. Namiga making so many moves on the map where it feels like Peripani again just trying to react and respond to everything that's coming their way. Yeah. PA did not opt for one slash raindrops, uh, unlike Wyvern. She went for this ring of health instead, which is a fair fair attempt. It does just mean she's being kind of pushed off the wave though, because they do have like an overwhelming amount of harass in She's, her net worth is just going to suffer in response. She can't really go for like a early ancients either, so she's just going to have to hit these creeps in the jungle. And then uh, like DK is going to probably just push the wave in, and then when it's under tier 2, that's when she'll farm it. Oh, depressed kid. Yeah, going straight on the battle rider again. Another kill for him. Still trying nice. to stay up at the top of the net worth, but they are shutting down his bat rider very nicely. They, they, they're having to give stuff away to Namiga to do this, but is. Uh, this is a lot of the momentum is meant to come from that mid lane for them, right? Bat is that tempo hero that's meant to play with the DK to allow the TB to safely farm in the jungle. It's definitely a little bit harder for Namiga because their two supports are not active in the way that Pani's are. Marcy, it's so easy for her to just jump in with the rebound, get that throw back, like throw you out of position, wyvern with those slows and stuff too. Chen is just an aura. He has creeps. If his creeps are not super strong, he's not going to be able to do that much in these mid fights with with his bat rider there's no one to jump in for him uh, like techies is damaged but yeah like they, they definitely have different skill sets on each uh, side supports in a way that favors the press kit a lot mm. but like you said they're giving stuff up like tb is is farming dk is farming you taking bot tower they're uh, lassoing ember spirit but again this wyvern and marcy sticking around the sounds from the blast off and the sticky bomb coming means they get the spree all they needed was that one additional support to help the bat rider out and a lot of room made now bottom lane pushing in jungle being farmed by chen who has mech being delivered so a lot of timings being hit here just 10 minutes in for namiga as the catapult waves are about to spawn a little mistake there from from ember walking up into the lasso like playing maybe a little bit too aggro on that feeling confident with supports behind him but Lasso is down now, which means Maureen could potentially like be ganked and killed. Like there's 80 seconds where they don't have that stun. Uh, like like Pawnee have uh, the chains, they have the rebound. Like they have stuns that that Namiga now don't. So they might just like relax. It looks like Maureen they're using that smoke just to farm the ancients instead. Uh, okay. th this is uh, actually <laughs> now that the sticky does damage, it means if you're not smoked, the creeps aggro out of the camp, which is really annoying. <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, poor health screen is dead. Yeah, techies yeah. went forward to scout things out. That allows DK to farm another wave, and like you said, the engine's been cleared while depressed kid. Going on so bad in the mid lane. He does still have his mech defending himself under tower with these two cores going ham on him. And he's still surviving. Tons of armor, lots of regen. So bad. Another slight of fist in a second with a chains for a depressed kid as well. But he's got the creep wave around him and Malreen nearby as well. The chains gonna finish him off with the Arctic Burn. And onto the back they go. Great blast off in by the techies, but that Winter's Curse will shut things down. Trading two for one while Vazia, the DK, he arrives in with a stun on the PA and Terra Blade with his meta. They're gonna try and make the most of things, but a great Phantom Strike enabled by a depressed kid's positioning. But these body blocks from Chen's Alpha Wolf straight in front of the PA to make her die. Structures are and one upside here is Parry Pani did clear out the catapults. So there's not an easy push towards tier one, but the DK form and metamorphosis going probably can still go for it. Everyone getting involved. I'm glad to see Pierre. I mean, she's dead, but she her coming mid, pretty nice. Uh, this this Chen was just way, way too tanky though. <laughs> like he baited them in so hard. Oh, disposing back the DK. He just turns and fights them with his TB illusions around. They've got the hand of God and Ember Spirit. He's got no remnant, there's no jump away. He's walked back in again. Oh my god. Yeah, that you can't play like that. You need to be you need to be careful now that, that Numiga have brought way more heroes. Like when it's just bat and and like a support or two, if there's no lasso, you're not you're not worried. If there's no support, you're definitely not worried. You're playing like very powerfully. Like they're bringing more numbers, but in a situation like this, you have stuns now. As a DK with a stun, as a TB with a lot of damage, you have the stuns from techies. You have to be aware that they can chain their spells into each other, or if you overcommit, you will just get hit by that blast off. Like they're, they're playing cockily. Like they're playing like they, we, they've just taken some good 
pickoffs and, and they're feeling good from the laning stage and now like they're not respecting the the strength of namiga's heroes when they come together and with this blink i really would expect namiga to now group up and like smoke i would hope to smoke and and use it effectively to get a kill yeah they'll have dragon form in just 10 seconds why not go again boots of travel the bat rider picks up one of the components for his bkb all right here we go time to move forward I mean, they've already got a 5k lead only 13 minutes in so they're definitely uh, getting up there the three top yep. cores on the net worth board are all dire the the damage from the techies attack. ult is insane like they're they're smoked they're looking they're hunting this blast off with like two proximity mines should burst pretty much anyone i want to say and who do they find is, is pa gonna break that smoke she does oh, i don't get so the bad. jump and the rest of Paripani invading northern jungle. It looks like Chen has managed to get himself away from them. A lot of smoke there from Depressed Kid and Immersion. And coming back through into their triangle. Vazia here aggressively farming. But he blinked away before the slight hit. And he's, he's out of there. Oh, what a slick move. Yeah, he deserves those tips. Yeah. He blinked out like as the slight was going off. If it had just clipped him first, his life was forfeit, but nice to get out. Uh, I, I think they are a bit disappointed at least though that they didn't get a kill off the back of that smoke. Like that was the blink reveal. Uh... Like if that slight, if, if, it, if it was a smaller stack, you know, no stack there or yeah, hit him first, different story. A good winter's curse though. On the bat with the DK, whacking into him, and Marcy disposes bat across. Maybe a turnaround though with a chain of heals and sustain, keeping Marina alive. And that explosion from the proximity mines of Hellscream, destroying both supports on the Radiant. While DK doesn't have stun for five seconds. He's giving chase, but he's all alone. And nobody followed him because they're inside the Roche pit with his metamorphosis. Trans good transition of a nice team fight. Supports are dead. They don't have the Winter's Curse when they respawn. So I think it's very difficult for Pony to, to contest. But they should try. They don't have that Melch finish yet, which is a shame. And they get the jump. The silence. Can they kill the Ember? No, not quite. Drop him to half health. And try and blow him up here as Heaven does rebound in on the DK. But this is a, a very disjointed, scrappy fight with all the sustain and the auras. Like, DK has 20 auras on him and just kills off the Marcy while Batrider jumps in, forces the exorcism. Still a little bit wary here of what the Ember can do from range with the poke that he has. And Vazia can't blink with the ghost hitting him. Would love to get in on top of this Ember spirit. They're even going to drop the rejuvenation from the seeds. Heal them up as they dive onto tier one and another blast off in, but Hellscream doesn't connect. Vazia will, aiming Pasha and Malarine trying to stack up these napalms, but it's Immersion that dies to the Batrider. And the rest of Paripani, they will disengage. They lost out on Roshan, they lost their tier one, and it really is becoming a, a one way street here as Namiga dominate this first 20 minutes of play. Yeah, good, good discipline, seriously, to not dive that tier two. The Ember was super low, the DP was super low there. <laughs> they could have <laughs> they could have run their heroes under that and just looked to, to finish off the kills, but I'm really happy that they kept their Aegis, they kept themselves alive, back off, understand that they are stronger, they are scaling better, they're topping this net worth chart, 7k net worth lead. This Maureen's going for his BKB uh, now. Like he's he's been uh, he's been hunting for a lot of kills this game. Like when they smoked up on DK originally, he had a haste rune. He was looking to try and play with them. They're just going to keep playing like that way. Just try and keep up farm on your TV, get involved, and then maybe towards the tail end of your Aegis, you look for a tier two. Or you just play it the way that everyone else plays these Aegises. Use the first one to really farm, out farm your opponent, and play confidently, not feel threatened. And then you take that second Aegis to be the one that way you finish off these hour towers and try and poke at the high ground. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm just always surprised at how powerful Blast Off is. Like every, every time yeah. I see it, but I think in particular in this game against heroes like Wyvern DP and Ember Spirit. Like Wyvern and DP are kind of single use heroes, right? They use Exo, they use Winter's Curse, and that's kind of the majority of the hero utilized. So if you're able to blast off into them before they can cast their spells, they're just nothing. You know, they are they are worthless bodies. I can get blown up by this TB on the Batrider as Pasha gonna get grabbed and dragged under a tower. Dragon Knight gonna come in with a stun as well as Heaven tried to save Pasha here. Let's see if Maureen will continue chasing with an Arcane Rune. It should absolutely be a kill on the Death Prophet. 
making sure to get away from any attempted spirit siphons, keeping the stacks of napalm up. Heaven trying his best with that rebound, but they've got so much chase potential. Oh, this is a, an attempt to TP from Pasha, and he actually gets himself what? away from there while well, Marcy rebounds away as well. What? Are they both escaping? That was illegal movement. Oh my. So they bit off he more than they could chew. He just siphons two creeps for that extra health in the rebound movement speed, just lets them get away. Maybe maybe a mistake from Vazir to try go for both heroes. If, he, if he'd had that stun for the DP, it should have been a kill. Yeah. Maybe a bit greedy. At least they forced them out of top and maintain like map control. Like you look at the split on the map right now of where everyone's playing. You're getting way more enemy. Yeah, and Vazir. He's not afraid. So they're going to jump into mid. They've already used the mech though. Holding hand of God. Going to need it to save the DK here. And they will use it. Turning back on to the Heaven Marcy. But dead to the TBDD rune. The Winter's Curse plays against him. And Depress Kid going to try and slip away. But this, this 560 damage terror plays right now. It's terrifying. <laughs> really scary. And he's so confident now. There's no Wyvern ult. That was probably the biggest threat to him. Yeah, Tanky starts blast off ready. And he's looking to go in onto Pasha, gets the land onto the DP, drops three mines on her, and even with that cold embrace still being burnt alive. The Firefly enough as Kiritich takes down Immersion. And you've got buyback on Wyvern, but there's no curse, there's no point, and yeah, you were talking about this Aegis being used to, to farm or maybe you know, to take a tier two or whatever, but that that coming straight high ground. 10k lead. Nomiga really feeling themselves now. You know, when the gift of high ground is given, do you really say no? <laughs> and they're not going to force the issue. They understand the Aegis is, like, uh, expiring in 40 seconds, and they are respawning on Pani. They might get the tower at best, but the, if they if they really committed... But there's no point giving the potential to throw away, right? You're about to finish this BKB on your Batrider. Um, your Dragonite also kind of heading towards one. Terribly wants his Skadi, and then he's just really powerful. That's, like, their next spike timing those two bkbs and the scotty they should probably all align together and then you're just great on Namiga. you're super set up for this next rush fight okay did you did you see how much hero damage has been done so far in this game by each hero i have not now okay oh no don't look don't don't look have i'm you, not have you looked okay good guess how much damage look. the pa has done two thousand less <laughs> what? No 1.3k Bat, no, Bat Rider's done 16,000. He's going to make it 20 soon. Throw the fireball in onto Heaven. Blow up the Marcy. PA adds a little bit more damage. Going to, yeah, going to go up to 2k now, maybe, with some big crits onto Vazir. But the blast off with the shard and the mines landing. Huge damage from Hellscream. Going to bring down the Phantom Assassin and Ember Spirit. He does have a haste and a remnant. He's chasing into this DK as that Winter's Curse holds the techies in place. But Malreen's still going. Stacking up nade bombs and removing Immersion from the game. Ember Spirit trying to return down bottom to stop the push that's arriving on their tier 3s as well as pressure on all sides. You love to see it. This game, we, we saw last game, the Nimiga did not buy Boost of Travel and they kind of struggled to have that global presence and pressure that we see in this game. Like, the contrast is insane. You, you just try and go top on Pani, you get hunted down. You try and go bot, there's more heroes there. They're super strong. Maureen can connect at any moment. Feeling so much pressure. Your PA only has a powder fury. It's so hard for her to fight without this BKB. You're so sad because you haven't even finished your wand because you're so desperate for items. She can't go with damage. This is definitely one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. Under 2k does not surprise me. I, I respect the attempt she made to get involved in that mid lane. Uh, might have just felt a little bit put out though after she died. Like, all right, guys, I'm I'm, I'm mad now. I'm I'm going back to farming. Don't don't yeah. talk to me. It's suffocating. <laughs> <laughs> just try to get that BKB as quickly as you can. But it's, it's even difficult for her to kill supports. Like, you're against this blast off that stuns now. You're against a Chen with Mech, Vlad. Oh, He's working on his Wraith yeah. Pact, which will be up not too uh, not too long. Yeah, 400 gold, just the recipe away now. They're, they're striving even more for this domination. Like, look, at Health Scream has queued up a four star, respectable, and then he wants Boost of Travel. He also wants to be going everywhere with his Batrider. Because he knows he is so much damage, so much impact by being able to get everywhere all over the map. And they're going to find Marcy. Very deep in that top jungle. It does have a TP. Vazia 
We'll have a stun ready in a couple of seconds. Look at how many heroes they're bringing back. The Chen's here, the Hurricane forward. Malarine helped out by that Dragon Tail. Marcy dead for 30 seconds, so a little bit of a window here. Oh, the play. oh my god! Oh, I just flicked my camera into mid and I barely caught the tail end of that. He died so quickly. I Have you seen Hellscream jump me in the, like... It, he just gets these mines off Triple so far. Like, he knows the exact Radiant's like distance between each mine. Puts them down so quick. They just explode. You're dead. It's just so much damage. Like, techies is a hero where you watch the techies that are not that good and they have rough games and they do not do like they, they you know they struggle the enemy team gets a lot of health like you can't kill anyone you look at a techies on a good game like this oh my god it seems unbeatable yeah that's far too strong hand of god manta for kuratich get the tower blade a little bit of distance as they jump to wyvern so no one just curse now immediate buyback from immersion and good discipline again from the Mega. Just fall back, thinking about their next Roshan, which we know will be up in a minute and a half. But they, of course, will want to start preparing for it right here. And look at, like, yeah, look at this techies back in the replay. Bang, bang, bang. Triple mines out after the blast off. Not even a chance for that Ember Spirit to react or respond. And this very, very scary stuff. Desperate smoke now from Carney. Wraith Pack for Chen, BKB for Dragon Knight, huge items for Namiga. Chen there with his army of creeps, but he's being run out by the Ember. Pasha pops his ulti, Hell Screams in with the mines again, silencing up this Ember Spirit and nearly blowing him up solo while Terra Blade arriving. The silence lasting long enough from the Press Kid to get a couple more taps in. His remnant is not far enough, and they've called GG. They know it's over. Namiga take the 2 0 victory. You know. I don't blame them. That uh, that that smoke, that smoke was their last chance to do anything. They lose that fight, which they did, and it just means that Namiga is going to get the next Aegis. They're already so far ahead of Noah. Like I, I, I respect them understanding that this this was it. Your PA is just too underfarmed to really do anything. You're playing into like just newly finished BKBs. This TB is out of control. It, and this techies. I mean the techies. We gotta give the MVP.